Welcome back, everyone, to episode 20 of the United States series. So let's look at inflation. Inflation is actually going down. Uh, we want to encourage that a little bit more. So I'm going to bump that up to 10.5%. And then we want to look at how we're making out with energy independence. So let's check. Okay, so we're practically almost there. So if we do maybe three or four We do three or four more shale oil wells, then I believe we pretty much have um, met our demand, and then some. Right, so it looks like there's some oil in New Jersey. So let's just go ahead and take advantage of that. And we're going to do one more. All right. So I believe that pretty much completes um, our strive for, for oil independence. So with that, that's going to give us just enough to uh, export if possible. And that'll bring us in more money. All right, now let's take a look at housing. All right, so all the dilapid dilapidated housing has been reduced to zero. So... I would say let's let's only do about let's only do five hundred for now because we don't we don't want uh inflation to spike up either and we kinda have to watch our spending still. Now let's look at our debt. So public debt is now down to 109%, where it was at 127 at the beginning of the series. Right, so... You know what, we're just going to wait until... I'm going to wait until April 1st when we get our other quarterly surplus where we do anything with the debt. So let's go to transportation. And we'll spend fifteen billion on railway transport. Let's 
Let's look at our unemployment. Unemployment's in a good area. Um, I would say between 3.75 and 5% is pretty good. All right, now let's go to Secret Service. So all the agents that we hired are now in place. So let's put a lot of these guys in Pakistan. Let's bump up Libya to 125. And North Korea. Let's bump them up to about 75 agents. Um, so let's put more agents in Morocco, put about 50 there. And you know what? We can put more agents in China. So let's take a look at uh, how this conflict is going with Libya. So Libya is still winning. So we don't really need to get involved in that at all. Okay, so we took out the Chinese Mafia in Laos. So because of that, we uh, increased our relations with Laos, even though they still don't like us, but they don't hate us like, uh, like they did before. And all right, so with Taiwan, We still don't have all the countries that we want to be involved with um, dealing with China. So we're going to give them a, um, we're going to give them something else to worry about. So. I'm going to place an air base in Taiwan now. So within 90 days, that base will be complete. Our great director won the prize for best foreign film. It is an important day for our national cinema and our cultural policy. Let's, let's see, do we really want to help Ecuador or Right, let's just give them five million. Bad. Let's 
give them another 15. Incredible! The first prize, can you believe it? All our cultural policy has been indirectly rewarded by this. Alright, and let's see. Okay, Bolivia likes us too, so let's give them another 200 million. Okay, so we managed to steal the plans for a level 4 missile launcher. So we should be able to produce that pretty soon. Um, because so far, China and Russia are the only ones that have that technology. And let's take a look at our military. Okay. So we're pretty close to our goal of 200,000 missiles with 145,000. Um, let's just increase. No, in fact, we'll leave commandos where they are. Fellow esteemed citizens, our current situation is critical. Faced with repeated provocations from this rogue state that is threatening both our country and the international community, I have made a conscious decision to declare war. We regret that diplomacy has failed. It is now up to our guns to speak for us so that we can defend our homeland. Okay, so that throws a monkey wrench in things. Um... Not because of the war between Turkey and Cyprus. But the conflict between Turkey and Greece now. And they're both in NATO. And Greece ha lost a thousand soldiers. So. And through NATO you're obligated to get involved. Because if one country gets attacked, then consideration the uh, ideology is that if one country gets attacked, you all get attacked. So you basically defend the other one as if your own country got attacked. Our network has obtained intelligence, data, and passwords on the principal platforms of the nation. We're finally ready to launch a cyber attack. We are now waiting for the green light. Fellow esteemed citizens, our current situation is critical. Faced with repeated provocations from this rogue state that is threatening both our country and the international community, I have made a conscious decision to declare war. We regret that diplomacy has failed. It is now up to our guns to speak for us so that we can defend our homeland. All right, so... The members of this organization are in no way involved in the assassination. The news of our infiltrated networks, combined with the questioning of former members, gives us certainty. This disinformation operation was doubtlessly a means for them to increase their representation and to spread even more confusion in the country. 
Okay, so <clears throat> back to this conflict. Um, I, I wish Everson would put something in more for uh, diplomatic pressure. And what I mean by that is, just like in real life, I should be able to call Turkey and tell them to back off and um, even send, like, the uh, Secretary of Defense in, or not the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of State, to try to pressure them to uh, stop their actions or even call for a ceasefire. Now, again, there's a 20... 22 edition in the works so I would hope that Everson would incorporate some portion of that um, which would make more sense and then um, even depending on whatever country is putting the pressure on you like I would say the stronger their military and the stronger their economic power is, the more influence you would have over that country to um, have them back off. So at this point, I'm not getting involved. Um, I'll wait to see what happens with the NATO allies and the UN. So th this is a uh, situation that's not going to be good at all. Okay, so... In face of the attack of which we are victims, I am officially notifying the Security Council and member states of our ultimatum of 72 hours. After this deadline, we will attack all hostile armed forces that have not withdrawn. We will not be intimidated. We will not give in. All right, so this situation is escalating out of control pretty quickly. Um... Again, we're just going to stay out of it. We'll wait for the, uh, the rest of the UN or the rest of NATO, see what their response is. Um, see, again, there should be some contact with the other NATO members condemning this attack. Um, and that, that, in turn, should put more pressure on Turkey to back off. So, well, at this point in this series, I'm just going to worry about my other concerns. So we're going to give some aid to the Philippines. And All right, so we don't have good relations with them, so we're just going to disregard that. And we're going to give five more, five million more to Ecuador. And we're going to meet with their leader. Because let's not forget, um, I do plan on creating a a uh, alliance with the entire 
American continent. In fact, let's go ahead and create that now. Okay, let's PCDU and let's see. Let's put this in Jacksonville. Let's, all right, so I'm going to shoot for 2%, 2% of our state budget. Um, let's go with the majority. All right, so we'll put that into place and then Go with party in power. And let's go with Andrew Basham. It is with great pride that I will assume my responsibilities at the head of this organization. I don't know how to thank you. Well, at least I can try my very best to serve the interest of the organization and our nation. And let's publicly support the organization. Our agents that have infiltrated this organization confirm their window of opportunity. It goes without saying that the operation is risky, but if successful, the short and long term benefits are. Okay, let's go through with that. Let's see what's going on with Cyprus and Turkey. Now, Turkey is actually losing. If you look at the number of uh, troops that have been killed. Um... I'm tempted to break off uh, diplomatic relations with Turkey for attacking first. Okay, Guatemala to going through a famine. So let's give them about 20 million. So all of that was to influence um, 
joining the uh, American Continental Defense Union. And let's go for another 10 million more. Good morning. I didn't come empty handed. In fact, I wanted you to see in order to submit to you this economic contract, which, as you will see, is profitable for both our countries. All right, cereals. Now, that's not going to even put a dent in our demand. It's not going to really do much for us, so I'm going to refuse. Still going to be cordial no and in that meeting. So let's go to industry. No, actually, uh, let's go to. All right, so we should have the plans for that missile launcher, and we do. So if we do 10 at a time, eight times, then we'll have all of that in three months. So let's go with 10. Let's go with another 10. So the reason why I'm doing this is if I did the entire 84, it would probably wouldn't be, it probably wouldn't be ready until later on in the year or the following year. So doing it this way actually gets you the uh, equipment faster. And I actually kind of lost count now. So this is going to be the last contract. Okay, so we have a surplus of 1.4 trillion. Our agents that have infiltrated this organization confirm their window of opportunity. It goes without saying that the operation is risky, but if successful, the short and long term benefits are almost incalculable, including by applying the call off grid, which calculates, as you know, the result according to the unknown X factor. Do you want to try to bring down the organization now? I think I'm going to wait a little bit. All right, now let's go into industry and let's go to missile launch. And we want to nationalize that. So it's going to cost us eight billion, but we'll have more control over, um, the amount that we can produce in a year.
Okay, so we're going to have 80 missile launchers coming in. I'd be happy to. Alright, let's go for the Alliance. We have that. I hope you didn't make me come here. Our country is confronted with many subversive undercurrents. And we're going to end that meeting. Ahem. Scientific rigor has proved its superiority over doctrinal barbarity. A simulation program based on Merings models, the application of transactional analysis to ambush situations, a pyrotechnical approach to interpersonal dynamics in combat situations. As you can see, nothing is left to chance, which is why this operation was successful in eradicating the terrorist organization. And okay, so we had a, another successful run with um, taking out terrorists. So this time we took out the organization in Syria. So before I end this episode, let's just see what uh popularity is. Okay, so Turkey just annexed um, Cyprus. So again, not going to get involved. Um, So it looks like that conflict is actually over. So we'll we'll just stay out of it. So in the meantime, I'm going to end this episode. So thank you for the support. Please share and click on the uh, like button. It'll help with the channel. I can use all the uh, additional subscri subscribers. Um, and I will see you soon.